on what's been a pretty quiet day on the markets mm. and that with the US and the UK both having public holidays today. Yeah, so it's like a double whammy because we know that many of our global stocks are in fact dual listed to London. So when London is down, then we get that kind of public holiday effect there where the guys that do the sort of currency arbitrage trading are not around. Mm -hmm. So those are people who'd look at SAB Miller in London and here and compare the price and look at the currency and so on and do little kind of short term data trades. So that lessens the, the volume. I mean, a normal run rate these days on the South African market is about 10 billion Rand. We did about three today when last I looked. Uh, then the US is off. So then I guess everybody, even those that are sort of normally inclined to look at what's going on there, and make a call on whether they're either entering a position now or doing a shorter term trade would say well we've got no view really and the US guys are out that's the sort of global epicenter so we're going to avoid that entirely but I don't know I mean it doesn't mean that we don't have a mind of our own it's just you know in a normal environment one is always looking for reasons to validate your trade or your entry point or your timing so in a vacuum where you feel a little bit, uh, you know, without guidance, I suppose it's fair enough to wait till tomorrow. There have been uh, quite a few interesting bits of news flow, though, and from uh, certainly from a company earnings perspective, a lot of the food producers having released mm. uh, numbers, and we've been speaking about it already. Tiger Brands, Ilovo, and uh, Tongart as well. First of all, let's start off with the sugar producers. What have you made of those numbers there? Look, I mean, sugar is a great commodity, but it is a commodity. It's a commodified type of business. So we've seen quite big price movements in recent years in sugar, and they were coming on the back of increased uh, sugar demand, interestingly, out of India, which is one of the world's largest sugar markets, mostly for sweets and confectionery and stuff like that. And then there was a big Brazilian um, crop failure last year. So sugar was one of the first soft commodities to go through the moon uh, last year. Then, of course, it all ended in tears. Um, I mean, the big investment story with the local guys is that Ilovo has the British, uh, Associated British Foods partner that owns most of its shares. So it's a bit like Absa and ArcelorMittal and Highfelt and uh, Vodafone, Vodacom anyway, that's got this kind of big parent that's looking out for it. That can be a good thing because normally they try and jazz up the dividends yeah. and they're expanding into these other countries that have preferential access to Europe. So I think that's a, a sustainable and obvious investment. The only difficulty is the weather. You know, I'm not a big fan of stocks that are dependent on, uh, you know, crop outcomes that are dependent on weather cycles. Yeah. So both them and Tong got very negatively affected by a South African drought. I didn't even think there was a South African drought. What South As African <laughs> drought? <laughs> well, they felt it I thought it had been raining like mad. <laughs> so it's a question, it. you know, you, you don't see those things coming. Although I suppose if you had, you know, yeah. a sophisticated, uh, you know, synoptic chart <laughs> driven model, you might get something out of these. Yeah. Tiger. Well, Look, I like Tiger's high-end, uh, mm -hmm. you know, branded goods thing, but the, the rest of it's a bit complex. That's not a bad stock. Great dividend yield. Well, nice synopsis there. Let's get to the start board because yes, I'm going to try my hand <laughs> at this. <laughs> ah, oh, excellent. Close right enough. out here. That's close perfect. Enough. I like the fact that you're not going <laughs> to the center. Okay, so that's closest to Avenge, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, is in the same way affected by this construction cycle. It's got the steel business, remember. It lost the cement operations that went out into AfriSan some years back. I like the management team there. Roger Jardine's an old friend of mine. I mean, they will come right. I've seen early indications. Somebody was saying that in the new building approval stats that you get from the municipalities, they've noted for the first time in like five years that there's been an uptick in the numbers of approvals for particularly residential building uh, units. So that's fantastic. So. I think you've got to be looking at buying these things roundabout now and you've got to decide do you go for one like that, but you know, I certainly like them quite a lot.